Hi there, I'm Jeff Stone, Editor-in-Chief at CyberScoop, and I'm happy to be joined today by Wes Avett, Regional Director for Higher Education at Okta. Wes, how has the adoption of widespread remote work changed Okta's strategies? Uh, Jeff, I don't know if changed is quite the right word, maybe reinforced. I think it's really reinforced the value that we provide to enable any organization to securely use any technology. Um, if anything, it's really pushed us to take our mission further faster. Uh, when we talk to, to organizations that use Okta, they talk about the fact that there's no going back, that expectations have been set for remote work and remote learning, and they've got to keep pushing forward. How much of zero trust, this concept we hear a lot about, right? How much of zero trust is a mentality versus a set of specific technological goals? Yeah, you know, enabling zero trust definitely takes technology, but take, excuse me, technology in and of itself won't enable zero trust. It's it's kind of more of the journey, not necessarily a destination. Right. And, um, you know, I, I view it as a commitment to really establish a, a, a security ecosystem built around users instead of, uh, you know, point specific cybersecurity technologies. Uh, but really trying to integrate them together around users and identity. On that note, what ro what role does identity play for con constituents that are using digital services? Yeah, I, I think identity plays a really big role in digital experience. You know, if you think about it, you know, rarely does anyone at work use just one application. They use tens of, if not hundreds of of applications to uh, remote work or to learn. And, you know, the expectations have been set that you need a cohesive uh, utilization across those applications, right? They all have to work together. And uh, a modern cloud-based identity platform like Okta ensures that these users have a consistent, seamless experience as they interact with all of those technologies. What should an organization's priorities be now in terms of establishing identity management procedures or protocols? You know, I work a lot with universities and colleges, and they have a, a real challenge around managing a single view of a person and all that they do, all they have access to. They have a number of different user personas that interact with them as an institution and have a real hard time getting that view of that person. So for, for us in our conversations with those institutions, it's really about centralizing oversight over these broad groups of users, no matter where they come in from. And then from there, really looking at opportunities to automate processes there, whether that's the creation of those users or provisioning them into downstream applications. Also um, integrating with things like their IT service management um, portfolio, so they can really streamline and automate processes, enable self-service, but uh, save a lot of time from uh, manual processes they have today. Sure. sure, I get that. Walk me through the effects of, of what might come with a more efficient means of identity management. Are there ripple effects? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, one that really comes to mind is, is around user experience, right? So with a more efficient, effective identity management platform, you can start to apply a lot more granularity into the personalization of uh, interactions with technology for people, but also uh, you know build out automation into that you know things that in the past have required you know human eyes to approve, they can build roles and policies uh, to enable that to be automatically approved, so that as users request access to new technology, they can get it instantly, have a much better experience. Um, also has a big uh, you know trickle down effect around reduction of human hours needed to maintain custom technologies, right? Um, institutions, organizations are really challenged to attract and retain talent and anything they can do to automate these processes means they can use those resources on much more high value activities beyond maintaining, uh, you know, keeping the lights on, maintaining processes as they are today and identity can play a huge role across that IT ecosystem to drive that automation. 
Is there anything that we can learn from recent news events? There certainly have been enough of them, but anything from recent news events that, that might help leaders today understand how they can be prepared for a potential security incident in the future? Yeah, you know, unfortunately, even with the best tools, there there's always going to be security incidents occurring. But the organizations that really have a identity-driven cybersecurity ecosystem that can leverage things like artificial intelligence for early detection and uh, rapid response, coupled with a, a single place to, to shut off access uh, when, when something does come up that is nefarious, those organizations are in a much better place to, uh, to position to deal with those, uh, those um, activities that happen. Sure. I can appreciate that. Wes David, uh, thank you again for joining us. That's all I have for you, but we will certainly uh, be in touch soon. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the time.